We are told in Hebrews 1, 1, 3 that he upholds all things by the word of his power. Vaclav Klaus, president of the Czech Republic, a brilliant professor of economics and a very outspoken critic of global warning, warming, authored a book on environmental policies, and maybe some of you have read that. He gave a very excellent speech recently, September 22nd, to the UN, and here's part of what he said, quote, contrary to the artificially and unjustifiably created perception, the increase in global temperatures has been, in the last years, decades, and centuries, very small in historical comparisons and practically negligible in its actual impact upon human beings and their activities. He went on to say, contrary to many self-assured and self-serving proclamations, there is no scientific consensus about the causes of recent climate changes, end quote. In one interview, Klaus said this, quote, global warming is a false myth and every serious person and scientist says so, end quote. It's interesting that he survived communism and knowing the deceptions of communism, he believes that this myth is being foisted upon a naive and hysterical populace in order to ultimately control them and promote a new wave of socialism and communism. In fact, the title of his 2007 book says it all, quote, Blue Planet in Green Chains, What is Under Threat, Climate or Freedom? End quote. Recently, I read a, an article in World Net Daily, and the title of the article caught my attention. Here it is, quote, 31,000 scientists reject global warming agenda. And part of what the, the article said, quote, more than 31,000 scientists across the United States, including more than 9,000 PhDs in fields such as atmospheric science, climatology, earth science, environmental, environment, and dozens of other specialties have signed a petition rejecting global warming, the assumption that the human production of greenhouse gases is damaging the earth's climate. The article went on to say, there is no convincing scientific evidence that human, that human release of carbon dioxide, methane, or other greenhouse gases is causing or will in the foreseeable future cause catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere and disruption of the Earth's climate. The petition goes on to state, quote, Moreover, there is substantial scientific evidence that increases in atmospheric carbon dioxide produce many beneficial effects upon the natural plant and animal environments of the earth, end quote. So scientist after scientist refute these claims, yet it continues to gain momentum, enjoying a cult-like following even among many Christians. Have you seen the new Green Letter Bible? The Green Letter Bible, if you read their advertisement on their website and in the bookstores, will tell you this, quote, the Green Bible will equip and encourage people to see God's vision for creation and help them engage in the work of healing and sustaining it. With over 1,000 references to the earth in the Bible, compared to 490 references to heaven and 530 references to love, the Bible carries a powerful message for the earth, end quote. Well, I would agree it carries a powerful message, but something that is radically different than what they are promoting. On several occasions over the past year and a half, I have talked with other pastors and Christians who have asked if our church is part of the, quote, Evangelical Environmental Network, which is a massive movement of ostensibly Christian evangelicals who make this, quote, declaration on the care of creation. And here's a little of what they say. As followers of Jesus Christ committed to the full authority of Scripture and aware of the ways we have degraded creation, we believe that biblical faith is essential to the solution of our ecological problems. 
It goes on to say, because we worship and honor the Creator, we seek to cherish and care for the creation. Because we have sinned, we have failed in our stewardship of creation. Therefore, we repent of the way we have polluted, distort, dis distorted, or destroyed so much of the Creator. Because in Christ, God has healed our alienation from God and extended to us the first fruits of the reconciliation of all things, we commit ourselves to working in the power of the Holy Spirit to share the good news of Christ, of Christ in word and deed, to work for the reconciliation of all people in Christ, and, here you go, to extend Christ's healing to suffering creation. They go on to say, because we await the time when even the groaning creation will be restored to wholeness, we commit ourselves to work vigorously to protect and heal that creation. They go on to say, we and our children face a growing crisis in the health of the creation in which we are embedded and through which by God's grace we are sustained, yet we continue to degrade that creation. These degradations of creation can be summed up as one, land degradation, two, deforestation, Three, species extinction. Four, water degradation. Five, global toxification. Six, the alteration of atmosphere. And finally, number seven, human and cultural degradation, end quote. Beloved, this is beyond bad theology. This is a blasphemous distortion of and distraction from the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and a staggering assault against the character of God. You see, this is the mindset of evolutionists, that, that we all exist by random chance, and we've got to take care of this fragile planet. We've got to reduce our carbon footprint. I hear this all the time. Beloved, this is perhaps one of the greatest hoaxes of all history, that man's actions can alter the temperature of the earth and ultimately bring about its destruction. This is such a lie. People that believe that it is man rather than God who is in control of his creation. This is pride gone wild. May I remind you that after the flood, God reestablished the cycles of the seasons and he promised in Genesis 8.22... While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Beloved, please hear me. God created the heavens and the earth. We know that not only did he create it, but he cursed it. He is the one that sustains it. He is the one that will destroy it. He is the one who will renovate it again. And ultimately, he will be the one who will recreate it. He is the one in charge, not us. The earth is his responsibility, not ours. But what's amazing to me, as we witness all around us, most of the leaders of the world have gone mad. Politically, economically, socially, militarily, morally, religiously. The world's beliefs are beyond naivety. It's even beyond being ignorant. They are delusional because they are demonic. This brings us back to Revelation. In fact, in Revelation 17, 5, we are warned about the coming of, quote, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. And in verse 2, we are told that the kings of the earth will commit acts of immorality and those who dwell on the earth will be made to drink with the wine of her immorality. This is emblematic of the counterfeit religious system that will come upon the earth when the Antichrist arises. A system that is drawn from the imagery of ancient Babylon that we see described, for example, in Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 7, where we read, Babylon has been a golden cup in the hand of the Lord, intoxicating all the earth. The nations have drunk of her wine, therefore the nations are going mad. And beloved, because of this, we see that people are going to continue to buy into the hoax of global warming and that man is ultimately in control of this planet. Because of this, man is going to continue 
to think that it's okay to kill unborn infants. They're going to continue to think that it's okay for people to be homosexual, to be transvestites, to be transgendered.